Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video. Welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. First of all, I apologize. I was not there for you guys in the weekend. I didn't do any live AMA. And why? Because I was focusing a little bit on myself and my family. We had two beautiful days, one day, boat trip, other day, just chill and relax and enjoy family time, guys. So uh, I am back Monday morning, four amazing five amazing Bitcoin jars, a trading tip, a travel tip, some live advice, huge news from Argentina. Maybe I should start to move to Argentina. I read this news, I'm like, yes, Mr. Presidente, I really like you. So it's gonna be a complete video with a lot of information. Watch it till the end and start this beautiful morning by giving it a thumbs up already. Thanks, and let's jump into the charts. Bam. The first chart for today, guys, is this weekly chart. Every candle is one week. We can see that massive resistance line, that green line that I already drew for a couple of weeks ago at 52,510. I told you that will be a massive area of resistance. This is now the second candle that we closed down below the level of resistance, which indeed is telling us, yes, this is resistance. We didn't close that much lower. It's a beautiful candle. It's less a little bit larger bottom wick than a top wick. And the new candle that we are closing now opened at the bottom of that wick and now is going a little bit lower. We are now around 51,500. This candle is going to close in six days. It is very important that you keep an eye on this candle and this weekly close in six days. Where is this candle going to close? Are we going to close this candle in the area of 48K? Then yes, that's a beautiful healthy pullback before we move again higher. Are we going to break this level with this candle already this week at 52,500? Believe me, before you know it, we are around that 59, 58K level, around that 60K level. And then the next huge resistance is only there at 66K. So the weekly chart showing us very positive signs. Look to the last period over here. We went up massively just to show you. Here, we went up, 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 up. And we found that line, we broke that line of resistance. And then that line became support for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks of support before we took it up to the next line. This is now resistance. When we break it, we can first retest that line again for support a couple of weeks. So this is going to take all the way, in my honest opinion, to the halving, which will be another two months before we reach the halving, which is eight weeks, same period like here, seven weeks. We could break it test it as support a few weeks and then around the halving take it up to that higher level around 50 to 60k. Beautiful chart. On this chart you can see it even better played out. You can see exactly where the resistance at the moment is. It's a one hour chart so zoomed in. 53k, 51k, we've been moving sideways for a very long time. We need to break out of this and that's exactly what we are start trying to do at the moment. We are not succeeding yet. And here you can see why we're not succeeding yet. Because if you would go to that 52,300 level, around 76 million dollar worth of Bitcoin will be liquidated. And the same thing will happen if we hit uh, that level there around 51K. So both of these levels are very important at the moment. This is one of the most important charts uh, for you to understand the Satoshis you need to buy a US dollar. And why is that one of the most important charts? Because you can see that in 2011, you needed 100 million Satoshis to buy $1. At the moment, you only need 1,959 Satoshis to buy $1. And you will be needing less and less and less Satoshis in the future to buy $1. That is what you need to understand. It's the opposite of the Euro or the dollar. It's deflationary. You will need less and less and less units of the Bitcoin to buy one dollar in the future. It's the other way around. You will need more and more and more dollars to buy one Bitcoin in the future. So it's really important that you understand this. Please pause this video and think now for yourself. What am I seeing? Why do I need less Bitcoin? Satoshi is the smallest account of a Bitcoin. Why do I need less and less and less of them to buy one dollar? That's because the Bitcoin price is going up and up and up. And why do I need more and more and more dollars every year to buy a Bitcoin? Exactly for the same reason. Please understand this. 
very important. On this chart, you can see that all the investment vehicles, like all the funds and everything, spot ETF, all of them, start to understand very clearly what I just told you in the previous chart. There is a shitload of Bitcoins under management now of all these investment vehicles. We are now at 930,885 Bitcoins under management by all these funds. Do you see how much it has grown since 2020 till now? This is going to grow even way more if you, every time, with weak hands, sell your Bitcoins to them. Because they do understand that Bitcoin is deflationary. They do understand that they need less and less and less Satoshis to buy one dollar every four-year cycle again and again and again. They want to protect their capital against inflation. They don't want to have the same stress that you're having now. My money is less valuable every year again. I can buy less groceries for my 100 euros. They want the opposite. And that's why these investment vehicles are now understanding Bitcoin. And that's what you see in this chart. They are accumulating more and more and more Bitcoin. At the moment, already almost 1 million Bitcoins in the hands of all of these investment vehicles. You always follow the money. If all the rich start to pump their traditional capital in euros and dollars and gold into something completely new, a store of value, the 21st century gold, Bitcoin, you need to do the same. Protect your capital against inflation. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. Yes, as you, as you could see in the short term, there is some volatility. We are in between this band and that band is keeping us in between between 50K and at 52k level. So that's almost 3 million addresses accumulated in this area. So that's why it's this massive area that we need to break out of. And it will take some time before we break out to the top or we break out to the bottom. But because there is so much support and so much resistance over there, guys, that is why it will take such a long time. Now, the zoomed out chart showed you exactly where we are at the moment. Did you see the comparison about 2012, 2016, 17, uh, 2020 and now? We are still at that bottom. We are going to break out. The halving is going to happen between 18 and 21 April. And when that halving happens, we are going to go and move into an explosive move again for Bitcoin. So it's still a beautiful moment to accumulate Bitcoin today. It should be dollar cost averaging because these prices around 50K won't stay there for long, guys. Don't be waiting for 30K. Don't be waiting for 40K. Everything between 48K and 52K at the moment is a really cheap buy possibility of Bitcoin. Because when Bitcoin goes to 100K, like in a couple of months or maybe in a year, you don't care about 5K less or 5K more because you will be in profit no matter what. And that's the most important part that you don't skip that buying that Bitcoin now. You need to start buying Bitcoin. Dollar cost average at these prices. Buy a little bit at 50K, a little bit at 51, a little bit at 49, a little bit at 53. It doesn't really matter. Few K less on that massive profit that you're going to make in this bull market doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is that you are invested in Bitcoin. If you want to take it a step further, then you should have listened to all the other videos where I explained to you that you should treat Bitcoin as your core capital. But most people are not there yet. For your, most people, it's still an asset that you want to invest in. For me, it's my core capital. I sometimes invest in Thai baht or euros. The other way around, just when I need it. Okay, now let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for today, guys, I don't really have a huge trading tip, but the trading tip is it's a 26. And today uh, on paid ignition, Ether Games is launching its IDO. I think Ether Games is gonna do really well in this bull market. So for me, I am gonna join that IDO today on paid ignition. I think Ether Games is going to be one of the leading games in this Web3 industry. So that's why I want to be invested in that. So that's why I'm going to use uh, the IDO today on Paid Network. Yes, I have staked my 75,000 paid tokens, so I will get like 24 hours earlier access to uh, invest in this project. But that is also for you. If you buy 75,000 Paid Network tokens and stake them, you will get early access as well. Uh, the second day of that IDO, the rest of the people get access. So all the tokens that are not being sold today will also move to tomorrow to the open IDO where everyone can access the buying opportunity without even staking the pay tokens. 
So there's two opportunities. The first day for all the people that stake paid token and the second day for everyone else that didn't stake paid token, but I do want to join that IDO of Ether Games. Now, the second trading tip is dollar cost average. Short but powerful, I just told you about it. Keep buying Bitcoin at all these levels around 50K because before you know it, we will be at 60K and at 70K and 80K and you will be able to already take your profits. You don't even need to ride it to the bull market top. If you can make 20 to 30 to 40K profit in six months time, just by accumulating one Bitcoin today, you will be very happy in that next couple of months. Like, let's say the end of this year. That's a beautiful Christmas bonus if you ask me. Now, let's jump into the travel tip. I'm gonna stay in the shadow, guys. Yes, maybe the camera will be a little bit more wobbly because I'm walking on the loose set now, but there is a little bit more shadow here. The screen is better and it's also not that hot. Um, the travel tip for today is this weekend we went with this boat to an island with a group of friends, Coach K, Lex, many others, and we did a barbecue. And that again reminded me to how fun it is to do a barbecue with a collective group of friends, but even more beautiful on a beautiful island. So if you visit Thailand or any of those countries that has a shitload of islands, take this small boat, before you go on the boat, buy your meat, buy all that stuff, go to these beautiful islands, there is always a barbecue there, and do a barbecue. It's beautiful when the sun set is there, when you can see the beautiful sun going under, the colors of the sky, the barbecue. So we didn't drink too much alcohol because we already drank alcohol two days before that, but we did do delicious fruit juices, barbecue, good beef, good chicken, all kinds of meat, all kinds of salads, and we really enjoyed it. It's so beautiful. And then in the evening, we uh, drove back on the sea, full moon, the shimmering of the moon on the sea. It was a magical moment. The whole day was a magical day. We even got stuck with the boat, but you need to watch my Instagram stories to follow all that stuff. Uh, but it was beautiful. So my travel tip for the day is never forget to do barbecues with your local friends over there because it's really connecting. You can chat and talk about all things uh, normally without like disturbance of a huge band or music or other restaurant people uh, talking too loud. Barbecue tropical island, beach style, sunset, what more do you want? So the travel tip for the day, barbecue on a tropical island while the sun is going down. Bam! I need to answer a question today of the followers, of course. And one of the questions was, Diddy, where are you going to go when there is a war? Like a world war. I really need to think about it. Where would I go when there is a world war? First of all, I really don't expect that World War III will be breaking out soon. I, I really don't think that our presidents, collectively worldwide, would be so stupid to allow World War III to even exist in these times. They would be like really retarded. Or maybe they don't see any way out anymore of all the economical issues and they can't stop printing money because they need to print money to buy all the bombs and to throw all those bombs. Maybe if they don't have any way out, they need to. Be, they will be forced to do uh, a, a World War III. But so I probably would definitely be visiting one of those countries that are very neutral. Like for example, in Europe, you have like Switzerland that is very neutral, or like in Asia, you have Thailand that is very neutral. In South America, I think most countries are neutral because they don't want to be in any war. So I would always focus on one of those countries that is not like interfering with this war that doesn't support or the United States or Europe that is just like stepping aside and being neutral. I think Switzerland has always been neutral when it comes to finance and also to other stuff in Europe and I think Thailand has been, done the same job here as a kingdom in Asia. So for me one of those countries probably would be the safest one to say but on the other hand Thailand is really close to China so yeah might be affected by like bombs gone wrong or something I don't know. Um, you know, I'm just not assuming that there will be a war. If there will be a war at that moment, we will see what we will do and how to act. I will just make sure that my family is safe, that I'm safe, and then you know, take it from there, you know? When there was a World War III, it doesn't mean it's gonna take place in all the continents everywhere. It's gonna just take place in one country, and probably all the countries worldwide will fight that world war in that country. So at the moment, the two places where the war could happen I think then would be somewhere in Israel, Palestine area or Russia area. I won't be in either of those areas. I will definitely not come near those areas when there is a possibility of a war breaking out, guys. 
So I'm not too concerned about the World War III. And again, if it is a World War III, it doesn't mean that the whole world starts to bomb each other. It's just taking place mostly on one place where a couple of countries coalize together to another country. And that's what they call a World War III. Economical, yeah, there will be some changes, but I believe Bitcoin will do very well if there is a war. Because that's the only stable currency that you can travel with all over the world, keep control on it completely, and be able to spend it as well all over the world. All the others is not that easy to travel around with. Just try to travel with physical gold. Just not possible. Bitcoin is the asset you want to be in in these times of war. That is my answer to your question. Let's jump into the next part. The news for today, guys, is amazing news. Javier Milei, El Presidente de Argentina, he just announced that he's proposing a bill to be able to jail any official of the central bank in Argentina that gives the assignment to print money to solve the deficit of Argentina. So he's just saying that any of those officials of the central bank in Argentina gives the call or makes the call to start printing money to solve Argentina's financial problems, you will go into jail. That is what the bill is going to state. This president, I get to like him more and more and more. This is a president that understands that all the problems in its country are because of the central bank printing money. This president understands the whole economical system. He understands that Argentina will be in pain for a couple of years by stopping the central banks because they can't print money anymore, you know, to, so to solve all their issues. But in time, it will solve the complete financial disaster that, has, that Argentina has gone through in the last couple of decades. Thousands percent of inflation. You can't solve this by printing even more money to create even more inflation. And Javier Milei understands how to handle it. And he is saying, try me out. Please, try it. Push that button. Print. You will go into jail. You will be in jail. You suit wearing central banks, idiot will go into jail if you print any more money to solve Argentina's deficit. I think he's doing a great job. I think more countries should follow his example because these central banks have caused a lot of shit for us. And we have accepted it for many decades. But it becomes time that we say, no, enough is enough. We are not gonna print more money. It didn't solve anything in the past and it won't solve anything in the future. All of the printing is just going to the rich. And luckily, a shit of the printing is going into Bitcoin. And yes, that is also positive for Bitcoin. The price is going up. But for me, it's way more important that the economical system worldwide changes so that everyone has the same possibilities and chances. So for me, it doesn't matter. Bitcoin can stay at 50K forever. For me, it's more important that Bitcoin changes the monetary policy worldwide and that we step away from the central banks, the oppression that's being forced upon us because of those central banks and the politicians, and that we escape that, that we keep our freedom, that my kids will grow up in a freedom world, not in a social credit system that is being pushed there by these politicians and the central banks. I don't want that world. So I'd rather have a freedom world in the future for my children than Bitcoin going to millions. That's very clear for me. And of course, I will be happy if Bitcoin goes to millions or to 100K. Of course, it will make me also happy because I was right in what I predicted already eight years ago. But still, I would prefer Bitcoin to be a peer-to-peer -peer cash that's being used by everyone out there to surpass the complete traditional finance system, withdraw all their banks, all the power of those people, just take the funds away so they don't have control anymore, put it all in Bitcoin, I prefer that situation of Bitcoin being one million dollar. Because that would make the world a way more beautiful freedom place for me and my children. I don't want them to grow up in a system where 1% has full control. Social credit system, face masks, all that shit that you don't want to do. Just because you use their currency. As long you are using their currency, they will be in control. The moment you start to use our currency, Bitcoin, we will be in control. Simple as that. So for me, that is way more important than a sky-high Bitcoin price to the moon. Freedom in the future for me and my children.
Last part of the video, guys, of course, again, an inspirational quote. Today's quote, I think, is very important for everyone to understand. Because we all have goals in our lives. We want to achieve all of those goals. And I know that all these goals are very important and we need to achieve these goals. But I think it's way more important than what you become because of achieving those goals. So the quote for today is, what you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. Think about that. Of course, if your goal is to become a millionaire, it's nice that you became that millionaire, but what did you learn during that path into becoming that millionaire? What kind of person did you become while becoming a millionaire? This is way more important than that end goal of being that millionaire. Being that millionaire will change a little bit. You will make your life a little bit more luxury and it will give you less pressure on, you know, working for food or for a roof above your head. But the most important part is, who did you become? What kind of decisions did you make? And what kind of decisions are you going to make in the future because of that? Because you will learn a shitload of lessons while you're walking the path towards becoming a millionaire. So it's way more important that what you become by achieving your goals instead of what you get by achieving your goals. And it always starts the same. It always starts, I want to achieve this. I want to be the richest man in the world or I want to be traveling in the world or I want to... All of that stuff, all of these goals, of course, they are reachable. Very simple. I've been telling you many times with all the life lessons in the last couple of weeks, months, everything is possible. Impossible says it even. I am possible. And of course, it's beautiful to set all these goals and you will reach all these goals. But it's way more important what kind of person you become because of achieving all these goals. Because that's exactly what it does. When you set your goals, you have something to focus on, you start moving towards the goals, you change as a person because you want to reach the goals, probably you need to change as a person, you need to change your environment, your surroundings, the people around you, your job, everything else. You need to change all of that to achieve that goal. So in the end, you become a complete new person because you want to achieve those goals in the future. So that is why it always starts with step one, set your goals. What are your 10 goals for the next 10 years? Make a list, write them down. These 10 goals, I'm setting them now for the next 10 years. And when you set those 10 goals, choose the one that you like the most. And that is the goal you're gonna achieve this year. And you're gonna do everything you can to achieve that first goal that you want to achieve in this list this year. And if that means quitting your job or whatever else it means, you just need to do it to achieve that goal. And that is when you find out that you're changing as a person and that the changing of your person and your surroundings and everything else, your job, whatever it is, will lead to achieving that goal. And when you do that one time, you can do that 10 times as well. So the next 10 years will be a success of achieving goals and changing as a person and growing as a human being into this new version of yourself that you always wanted to be. That's how simple it is, guys. Now, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video again. I hope you enjoyed the charts. If you did enjoy the charts and everything else, then please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts, about everything else in this video? Uh, we want to grow as fast as possible to 75K. I want to raise Bitcoin to that 75K level. We want to achieve 75K before Bitcoin reaches 75K. So that is my goal for this year till December, 75K YouTube. And I'm going to achieve it because I'm going to change whatever is needed to achieve that goal. Even if I need to make different kinds of videos, I'm going to do it because I want to have 75K views. Let me know down below what you think I should change to reach 75K subscribers on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam.